Chapter 17 A Prayer of David Hear the right, O Lord, attend unto my cry, give ear unto my prayer from lips without deceit. Let my judgment come forth from your presence, let your eyes behold equity. You have tried my heart, you have visited in the night, you have tested me, you findest not that I had a thought which should not pass my mouth. As for the doings of men, by the word of your lips I have kept me from the ways of the violent. My steps have held fast to your paths, my feet have not slipped. As for me, I call upon you, for you wilt answer me, O God, incline thine ear unto me. Hear my speech, make passing great your mercies, O you that savest by your right hand from assailants them that take refuge in you. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. From the wicked that oppress my deadly enemies that compass me about. Their gross heart that they have shut tight. With their mouth they speak proudly. At our every step they have now encompassed us. They set their eyes to cast us down to the earth. He is like a lion that is eager to tear in pieces. And like a young lion lurking in secret places. Arise, O Lord, confront him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked by your sword, from men by your hand, O Lord, from men of the world, whose portion is in this life, and whose belly you fillest with your treasure, who have children in plenty, and leave their abundance to their babes. As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness, I shall be satisfied when I awake with your likeness. All right, let's go back up to verse 1. Now this is a prayer. A prayer is a little bit different than a song. It's something we may not necessarily sing out loud, but something we'd sing within our own heart to God. It's a an earnest expectation or something we desire or something we wish to make known. And that's what this is. This is a prayer of David. And we're going to pick it up here in verse 1. Hear the right, O Lord, attend unto my cry, give ear unto my prayer, from lips without deceit. Hear the right, or hear the just. Now, God always hears the just, and those that they that speak in righteousness, we'll find out in justice, and, in, and that's what this prayer does. But intend unto my cry and give ear unto my prayer from lips without deceit. Or from these lips that have no uh, deceit, that have no uh, feigned lips is what uh, King James Version says. Or this intent of pretending, this, this deception this, that's not based in deception. The give ear unto my prayer, these things which I earnestly expect, hear my cry. This is, is because that it's all one thing. It's a lamentation. It's an earnest expectation. And it has no deceit in it to let my judgment come forth from your presence. Let your eyes behold equity. Let my judgment, let this judgment that's on me even come forth from your presence. Let God be the judge of me. Let, and let his eyes behold equity, truth. Let let because God uh, knows the intent of the heart, and it's God's eyes uh, upon us whom we're worried about. This these judgments of men will find often are based in their understandings. Three, you have tried my heart, you have visited it in the night, you have tested me, and you findest not that I had a thought which should not pass my mouth. You have tried my heart. Uh, it tried as to, like you, we would do gold in a smelting pot, is to purify. And that is what the tried here is. It's not like you was tested in a way. But in, in uh, King James Version says, you have proved it. Uh, the word is bachan. And it means you have examined it and you have proved it you know uh you've scrutinized it 
you have placed your judgment upon it, so to speak, and you have visited in the night. Uh, in the night, when a man lays on his bed, he thinks about all the things that he's done, he does, and he, these things that he should do in life, and his, his, his meditation should be in the law or the understandings of God, and we would find he would be in the correct thought. But when he, if he lays there and thinks wickedness and thinks of all these things, then we find out that's where God finds him in his wickedness. But even that I had a thought that should not pass my mouth. Uh, and that's to think something that we wouldn't say out loud necessarily in front of a crowd of people. See, to have thoughts so pure as that. For as for the doings of men, by the word of your lips, I have kept me from the ways of the violent. And as for the doings of men, but as for these things that men do, as for everything that everybody does in life, by the word of your lips, I have kept me from the ways of the violent. These ways of the violent, these ways of those that are evil, that actually do wickedness in the earth. But your lips, the words from your mouth, these things that work, that you have poured out, have kept me from this. And that's the law. That's the words. That's those things that come from God's lips, the way he works, these things he have worked in the earth even. Five, my steps have held fast to your path. My feet have not slipped. My, my steps, uh, these things I put forth in life to accomplish what I'm going to do, have held fast to God's path, God's ways. God, see, that's the ways God appointed in the beginning that we should go on these ways. My feet, those things I stand on, those things I go by, have not slipped. I have not erred. Or these or to stay in God's ways, God's understanding. Six, as for me, I call upon you, for you will answer me. O oh God, incline your ear unto me, hear my speech. And as for me, that's myself, I call upon you. I don't call upon another. I don't have no go between. I go straight to God. For you will answer me, and God is always good to answer those that are just, those that present themselves righteous before the Lord. O oh God, incline your ear unto me, hear my speech. Listen, a, this speech here, and that is to, I have declared my way, myself righteous, I have, or to God, placed myself in his judgment, placed myself upon his path, that's his law that he gave in the beginning. 7. Make passing great your mercies, O you that savest by your right hand from assailants them that take refuge in you. Make passing great your mercies. Uh, that's uh, really a uh, poetic way to, to say something, but it, it's actually to, to uh, set aside uh, some of your goodness. Actually, the the word is uh, pala, and it means to make it distinct, set it aside, make it a, uh, we're going to find, uh, for a purpose, and, and to that purpose would be loving kindness, or ketzed, and that is to mercy, a little kindness, and, uh, uh, if you would, is, is basically what it would mean. Set aside a little mercy for me, you that savest by your right hand, because that's that's who does save. God God saves by his great work. That's what his right hand always is, even the strength in his works. Uh, and he saves from the assailants, uh, these, uh, or at least them that take refuge in, refuge in him. And this here is... Uh, he saves by his his really his right hand those that trust in God, and that's really this word here is kasa, and what kasa is those that that seek refuge, those that flee for protection to God. Uh, God saves them from those that are about, and we're going to find out those who are about just who they are. 
8. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Keep me as the apple of your eye. This is a common old saying. Apple of, or the apple of my eye means the, this thing, the kind of like a beautiful thing in my eye. A, um, but what this word is, is ishon. And this means this man of my eye. This, and this one whom God perceived in the beginning when he created man. See, not this man of sin, but the man whom uh, did according to God. The man who communed with God. Did God's one whom God made, even for his pleasure. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Hide me there in the shadow of your wings. The shadow of God's wings. The, even this here is a representation of a, a covering, of protection. Hide me there in your protective coverings or your protective borders. Nine. From, and that would be the law. That would be the confines of God's protection. It's under the covenant that he made with you. Nine, from the wicked that oppress, my deadly enemies that compass me about. And this would be from the wicked that are, the wicked that oppress. And that's who they are that's gathered all around. These are the enemy that's coming down. And uh, uh, my deadly enemies. Uh, this word deadly here, this my deadly enemies. And this word is soul. Uh, this would be my soul's enemies. The word is nepesh, and it means soul, or my inner man's enemies, these that surround me about. Uh, he worried about those that come against me to fight me. Of course, David was surrounded by Saul, but these, these ones that was, because Saul wasn't trying to kill David for what he'd done, but for who he was inside. Ten. Their gross heart, they have shut tight. With their mouth they speak proudly. Their gross heart uh, they have shut tight. I believe the King James Version says uh, they are enclosed in their own fat. And, and, and within their own substances of their own understandings, they've made their self that way. See, they, they get all bound up in their own understandings. And they shut tight. They, they close out everything else that's around. They close out the truth. They close out the obvious. They get bound up in their understandings. And with their mouth, they speak proudly. They come against God. We'll find out. They, th they try to stand up and take some kind of authority. But their authority is over something they've made with their own hands. At 11. At our every step, they have now encompassed us, and they set their eyes to cast us down to the earth. At our every step. Uh, it, it, by everything we do, all around, see, everything that we go to do this or that or this, they've distorted, they've twisted, they've, they've come in, they've taken everything, and they've... And they've used it now to come against you. They've encompassed us. They've surrounded us with their understanding. And they've set their eyes to cast us down to the earth. And they set their eyes, their perceptions, or their understandings they're going to set forth to do, to accomplish, to cast us down to the earth. To humble, to humiliate, to make, to cause to bow down. Twelve, it's, it's like to be oppressed. Twelve. He is like a lion that is eager to tear in pieces and like a young lion lurking in secret places. He is like a lion uh, It's eager to tear. It's ready to rip in pieces, a hungry lion even. A lion, uh, he, this, he, and this, this would be this, these wicked ones, the, or these ones who have made this wicked one. They are ready to tear in pieces like young lions lurking in secret places. Like young lions, they don't know what they're doing. They have no uh, understanding how to hunt. They just jump on, rip, tear, and leave it to lay, having no understanding what they've done. Hiding in secret places, 13, arise, O Lord. Confront him and cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked by your sword. Arise. 
O Lord. Come forth, stand up, and confront him. Fight this for me. Cast him down, and these wicked ones who do this thing. Then deliver my soul from the wicked by your sword, by your judgment. See, that's God's sword. God's got a sword, too. See, just like a soldier of that period of time, one who would be decked for war, when God comes forth in judgment, he presents himself ready for the battle. He makes his sword ready. He prepares his sword. See, this is the story we get from the from the book. God's sword is simple. It's the, it's the truth. It's that which divides. It's the law, see, and it divides sin from blessing. And that's just the way it is. 14. From men, by your hand, O Lord, from men of the world, whose portion is in this life, whose belly you fillest with your treasure, who have children in plenty, and leave their abundance to their babes. Uh, and to to uh, deliver my soul from this from the wicked by God's sword, to divide me now out from men. See, divide me out now from men. Set me aside, make me distinct. Set me for for show me a little mercy. And by your hand, by your works, by what you've done, and this would be the example God gives us in life. God gives us those that don't obey, that we can see, that we should be able to see both those that do and those that don't, and the difference it makes in this world. And these are the men of this world, or those this generation that we see before us now, whose portion is in this life. Now this life here, uh, even we're talking about those men now that whose portion is in this life or in the flesh, and whose belly you fillest with your treasure. These hidden treasures, actually, of God. These treasures that are hidden. And we'll find out these are hidden judgments as well. They have children in plenty. They are these children here. This word is Ben. It means son or grandson. But they, they have a they have sons, many. They have those that are going forth, and they leave their abundance to the babes, those that nurse to the next generation. See, they, they have left it. Because God blesses them as they go forth with the worldly goods, with worldly treasures, and all this is they see. 15, but as for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with your, li with your likeness. But as for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness, in judgment, in justice. See, this this word here is sedek, and that is to be judgment, to, uh, to be right, to be correct, to be just, to be fair. Uh, because God, we'll find God is fair. God is, God is always just in the ways that he does things. He's always trying to teach, and we'll find out, to these, this pupil of his, this one who presents himself as a pupil, uh, one who willing to accept God's understanding and try to, to look for the knowledge in it, look for the wisdom in it, as to make it a better place to live. Instead of always going forth against your neighbors, trying to make them live maybe in accordance with you, with your understandings. But I shall be satisfied. I shall be, my thirst shall be quenched even when I awake. When I awake, when I come forth even with your likeness. And that's with God's likeness to be like him, to be perfect in understanding as the people seeks to be like the master, always wanting to have knowledge like the teacher does. God give us a little understanding. God give us a little knowledge in the beginning to see what we could do with it. Moving forward, Psalms 18, turn and return. Turn. 